Hey guys, so um, a lot of you have requested some videos about my process. Um, this is pretty new to me. I don't really post videos. The reason why is because one, lack of time. Two, I'm not really that savvy with technology, so I'm not really secure about my video editing capabilities. And number three, um, mostly lack of space. I don't have a place where I can set up a tripod with a camera or something like that here in my little studio space. But I figured we give this a try since most of you are home quarantined due to this uh, coronavirus that's going on and I am home as well and I'm able to get some work done. I am unfortunately a little bit sick. I, do, I think I have some sort of a cold or a flu but um, nothing to worry about. So we're making the best out of this. So um, I'm just going to draw away here so that you can see um, how I go about these drawings. Now, uh, what you will see here is I've already started a drawing. Uh, I started with moving around some sanguine powder. It's almost like a pigment, but I think this has something else that makes it adhere to the paper a little bit better than just regular pigment, but you can do this with pigment too. Or you can uh, sand down your sanguine pencils with a little sandpaper block spread it around there, sprinkle it, and then just move it around the paper. You can do that uh, with your hand. Probably not actually good with the hand since you don't want your finger oils to be on the paper. Uh, but you can spread it around with um, a paper towel, cotton balls, or even a um, something called a stomp or a tortillion. And then after that, I go about taking an eat eraser and bringing out some highlights and start erasing and figuring things out. I, at this point, I don't know yet what the drawing is going to look like. I just start making lines and also the randomness of the spreading of this sanguine powder creates certain patterns and textures and I start visualizing things out of that. After that, I start going over it with the sanguine pencil and start creating shapes and making things a little more concrete. For this specific drawing, I started then using a regular HB pencil. And then I started finding the places where I wanted the darkest. I just, um, I needed some contrast. I wasn't getting enough depth with the Sanguine pencil. Uh, everything is pretty much tri uh, trial and error. Um, so, I figured out that the pencil wasn't the best thing to use. Um, it created more gray areas and also there's a slight shimmer to the pencil. You can see it in this area here um, where I put some graphite down and it creates a silvery shimmer instead of depth. So what I decided was that I was going to go over it with a Micron pen. And at first I thought I was going to be using this sepia tone, uh, but it turns out that it was a little too dark and you can see that here. So I'm using a lighter brown. I think this is a, a, a brown or sanguine uh, pencil. I don't know what the name of the color is because it's been rubbed off my pen already. So I've been hatching away and creating more forms and this is where I'm at right now. Um, I am not sure if I'm going to continue doing uh, any more work on this area because I just kind of want things to kind of fade away. So I'm focusing now on this. Um, and yeah, let's get to drawing and we'll see where this takes where, where this takes me. Now, the areas where I've built some of this graphite, like this area where I'm working, at the beginning it will reject the pen and the ink. 
you'll see that the ink will beat up a little bit and it will not adhere properly. But once you have a few lines going and once the ink dries, you're able to layer a little bit more and then the ink starts to take better. Basically the waxiness of the Sanguine pencil with some of the waxiness in this graphite pencil have created a very smooth um, satin like layer on the paper. So anything that's wet, it's going to be rejected, but not for long. See, right now I'm having issues. The pen is not working in this area, but I let those few lines dry. Once those dry, I can build upon them and then it starts to adhere better. Now, I don't work from references, from photo references. I've been working from imagination. So this is more of a free flow. I just figure things as I go and I try not to repeat my patterns too much because then that looks a little too mechanical and boring. So it's always good to keep an eye out so that you're not repeating yourself. Basically, I let the drawing tell me what to do. I don't have any plans coming into this. such a beautiful day out it's sunny and I wish I could be out there but because of what's going on in the world and because I am a little bit sick I have to stay in but it's good because I actually don't get to spend much time in the studio when there's daylight because I actually do have a full-time job that helps pay the rent here So at this point, I'm just hatching and cross hatching a little bit, creating some forms. Sometimes the layering of lines on the page create random patterns. And if it works for me, then I go with that. And then I make something out of that. If it doesn't work, then I have to somehow keep hatching away and hiding things that I don't like going over it.
Now, I could have done this video live, uh, but I decided not to uh, for two reasons. One is because I'm using my my phone, of course, as you would with Instagram. And because I was going to be facing away from the screen, I was not going to be able to see people's questions or messages. Um while doing this because my eyes have to be on the page to be able to see what I'm doing and the other reason is because I felt that maybe doing a regular video that way I can post it and that way it could be accessible to people later on if they want to go back to it or if they just missed the life um, broadcast of it so I'm just kind of following some of the lines that I've already made with the sanguine pencil and going over those areas with pen but the pen changes things and so I kind of let this pen dictate where I'm gonna go with it and again I'm making little short little short hatches little lines some face that way some go the other way some go this way and then when I need to create more depth and more form I go over the same ones like this in the opposite direction and that creates more uh, more richness more depth in these shapes here Okay, so this is pretty much it. I just keep working and building it up. There's no, um, there's no magic really. It's just having the um, patience. And I guess the time to do it. And it's all a matter of just keep working. If you keep doing it, if you keep working, you get better at what you do. It's all practice. And it's patience. Because these things take time. I do love the sound of pen though, on the paper. Or pencil as it drags across the surface. Alright, so I'm going to keep building this up and I'm going to be moving down and I also have to figure out what it is that I'm doing here because this kind of looks a little odd just by itself so I have to figure out if I'm going to break up this shape with more stuff um yeah it's all a work in progress and i just have to figure out what i'm doing so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and you have a better idea of uh of my progress my process take care everyone and talk to you soon